Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. I am excited about today's interview. Gretchen is young. She's powerful. And you are going to learn so many things from this interview, from purchasing a business to taking that leap into entrepreneurship to the things that all of us as women struggle with, um, children and guilt. And she's just very real and very honest. And I think that you will take a tremendous amount away from this interview. So I'm really excited to share it with you. Welcome to Moms Making Six Figures. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> we finally get to do this. I know, it finally. Like it's been a while. It yeah. has. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're flying out today, too. So Yeah, good old Austin. Thanks for squeezing it in. No, thanks for having <laughs> me. I'm excited. So I would love it if you just started with your background. Perfect. Where you started before you ended up in lashes and on your business and all of that. Give us the before. The before, Gretchen. So um, I am originally from Montana, from a really, really small town called Butte. It looks like butt on the map. <laughs> and um, I grew up there, and then I went to um, college in Missoula, Montana, at the University of Montana, and um, graduated with forensic science. I wanted to work for the FBI. That was like my dream. That's all I wanted to do. Um, and I was working at a bank through all throughout college, and I was working my way up like crazy through it. And and some stuff happened here in Boise that they shipped me to to figure out some crime-related activities. And so I moved to Boise, Idaho. I was only supposed to be here like two days or two months, I mean. Um, and I found I met up with these girls who owned a nail studio and they just started doing lashes and it wasn't regulated in Idaho and they were like you should still come do this with me well because of the situation that was happening at the bank I wasn't allowed to be friends with anybody because of you know you didn't know who was, who was. doing the activities uh -huh. and so I was like oh this would be a good way to make friends here and there before I start with FBI I was going through like the interview process and I um actually started um, doing lashes like super part time. I was working at the bank all throughout the day and then I would go at night and weekends and do lashes and I just like fell in love with it. I was making like triple the amount of money that I was <laughs> about to make and um, it just honestly blew up. That was six years ago. Um, I started my own studio within four months of that and then started hiring my first employees, um, started growing my team like crazy, went to school for it so that I was like legal to go teach everywhere, started getting flown out to all these cities to teach it. And then in 2020, the company that I used their products, um, I was wholesaling for them and a different company. Um, she had announced that they were going to do a liquidation sale and that she... Um, was backing out and I messaged her and all the cards fell into place. I ended up buying the company in 2020 and it has just completely boomed from there. It's just been nonstop really non -stop. for you. Nonstop. Yeah. So what, what did you, back to the kind of the beginning, what did it, what was it about doing lashes that you loved so much? I think so as a kid all I ever said what I wanted to do was to make a difference like that's it and I always loved beauty things but I never thought I could make a difference doing that but mm -hmm. with lashes you're it's like a counseling session you are in that person's life every two weeks they don't miss their lash appointment they'll miss their counseling session but they, you know what's going on in their life uh, who's going on in their life when it's going on in their life and you just really get to support them mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of vulnerability during it um, plus you're just like giving them confidence and like it's like a beauty service mm -hmm. and so then um, I started connecting with other beauty professionals in the industry and I loved that so then when I started selling products to other lash artists that was really like my connections there like somebody who had the same commonalities as me and yeah that's really cool it's so interesting to listen to so many different people from so many different backgrounds and it seems like with most people that are really good at what they do like you there's always this emotional connection to serving people which is so interesting to me. So let's talk about the business because I'm sure that even though it's gone like this, you've had a lot of this Absolutely. along the way. So talk to me about 
becoming an entrepreneur and the struggles and the wins. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think um, consistency, like, you know, the stability, that's so scary when you're first starting out. I remember I stepped down at the bank, like, to a part-time teller just so that I could have some stability. I was like, okay. And then once I started seeing the money come in and, like, the actual behavior is happening, I was like, okay, let's take a step back. I think hiring, that's been one of the hardest. How is that? Oh, I'm, I'm... I'm a very loving person and I'm very bad at being direct. Like I, that is totally my downfall. I know I'm not meant to be people's managers. So now I've hired the right managers to be in those places so that I don't have to do it. Um, One of my mentors told me to uh, hire slow and fire fast. And I really have to put that into my mentality now. And it's like one of the hardest things is the people, but it's also the most rewarding too. So I have such amazing people on my team, but it's taken a lot of trial and error to get to that amazing team and what I actually needed Mm -hmm. from people. Do you feel like you've grown a lot in that? (sighs) Grown so much. If you would have told Gretchen like four years ago, like when she was crying, because, you know, (laughs) you know, people attack you or like you realize you could have done better by somebody in a certain area or you have to make almost like a selfish decision to get you to the next level because you're putting in the hours, but you can't bring someone along with you. Like it's hard. And so I think giving yourself grace and having grace for those around you and just Mm -hmm. Being intentional with the time you are putting into people and as loving as you can and be okay that like maybe that journey will end eventually. I think that that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. The honesty. And honesty. Yeah. And I think like genuine connections, like the right people will be there always, you know, and mm-hmm. um, as long as you want best for you and them, like, I think that's really important. So one of the things that um, you and I had kind of talked about that I think would be really interesting for the audience to hear is when I asked you about the diversification in your business. Mm -hmm. So you really have multiple streams of income, which I I think for every, every person, but I love to say this for women, every woman should have, right? So talk about that because it didn't start out that way. So you started out as essentially a solopreneur and then, Mm -hmm. you know, grew from there. How did you make those transitions into those other verticals? Um, how we were kind of speaking on earlier, you said it's so important that you encourage people to pay on assets. Um, Mm -hmm. I grew up from a business family. And so when I was getting all this money coming in, it was so easy to go buy the purse or, you know, go on a trip. And I had to kind of sit down with myself and say, okay, so how am I going to long-term do this? Because I was doing clients 12 to 16 hours a day, six days a week. I was falling apart. My body was falling apart. I was hurting. I was emotionally drained from hearing everybody's, Mm -hmm. everything going on. And so I was like, okay, how can I be smart about this like long-term? So I just had to look at my business from all angles. And so I think that it was really important for me to, when I did get a chunk of money or when I was saving up for something, I just didn't free invest it into myself. And I told my, I kept telling myself, okay, just one more year of investing and then you get a play and then one more year of investing. But then it's become fun. Like it's like a game now. Like what else can I like grow, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, it's been, it's been fun and I've made wrong decisions. I've made right decisions. Like I do have income coming in from everywhere which does make more responsibilities, but I've learned mm-hmm. how to hire and to um, delegate tasks, which has taken it off my plate quite a bit. So when you purchased the Lash brand. Mm-hmm. Um, that what, was the biggest change. I was going to say. <laughs> so what was that like? Because I'm imagining that was a pretty steep capital investment for you. Yes, and more a, than a house. <laughs> and very different in the way that you would manage that too, mm-hmm. because that's manufacturing, mm-hmm. which probably includes overseas. Yes. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. I think the hardest part when I bought my company was actually that I took over such a big name in our industry. So like I had built locally my salons, I had built like my clientele, I built my girls, like I've built all that. I built a name for Gretchen, but then I bought, her name's Hillary Brand, uh, that's why it's called My Brand Lashes, it was her last name, and so I bought her company. So then all of a sudden I was like, kind of imposter syndrome like I need to be like Hillary like these people are here for Hillary Mm -hmm. and I'm taking over and it took me about a year to finally be like okay I can't be Hillary like she she's the most amazing human I've ever met she's like an older sister to me like she'll always be rooting me on but I have to be Gretchen in this and my since that moment like I can literally tell you and I just was like okay like I just have to give this all as Gretchen that's when my business like that part of my business started actually booming and so but that was really hard at first to take over someone else's company plus to take over an already established well-running machine it was she had everything in place for me, which was so nice. And she thought of a lot of things I would not have thought of buying a company. I had her on for about a, like six months afterwards to answer questions and to do all that, to mm-hmm. get me through Black Friday. That was nuts. But um, 
I think just the imposter syndrome was the hardest thing when I first bought it. And now like weird stuff comes up that I'm like, oh, how do I handle this? But it's been like, I, I finally can say like I have a hang on it now. So that's interesting that you brought that up because there's so many books out there. And I feel like most of the business books that you read talk about imposter syndrome. Yeah, they do. So do you feel like you've completely overcome that or do you revert back into it sometimes or? I think I'm good now. Like I, yeah. I have the confidence behind who I am and what I stand for now. I've also been doing a lot of like speaking gigs under like my company, but also me. Mm-hmm. And so I think I've just like grown into my own. Um, I remember just watching like my follower count, and my engagement like tank when I first took over. And it was just because like those weren't my people, if that makes sense. But I built it back 10 times more now that I have my people behind me. Like when I'm meeting people at these conferences mm-hmm. and my superpower is people. So if I can get in front of somebody and actually, like, connect with them, like, you know who your people are, you know, and they can see who I am for who I am. Yeah. You're very authentic. Yeah. I try to be. You're very real. Yeah. Thank you. So let's talk about motherhood in that. Yes. Not only do you have all of these facets of your business, but you have two young children Mm -hmm. and an additional bonus baby baby (laughs) that you love. So motherhood on top of running a business and you're traveling a lot too Mm -hmm. so talk a little bit about that because I feel like every successful businesswoman manages that differently but I'd love to hear how you think about it and then how you address it the traveling is definitely um happening more and more frequent now all of a sudden like once I get one gig now I get three and then I get five and it's been more consistent um I can't say guilt doesn't appear it definitely appears a lot especially my babies are one three and then 14 so they're all in different stages of their life Mm -hmm. um I'm very lucky that I have such a good support system behind me that makes sure that they're loved and cared for while I'm gone Mm -hmm. I do quick turnaround trips so I'm gone like two days and I'm back um and then I just really try I think as motherhoods we need a balance right like we never shut off the business part of our brain so I've really had to learn boundaries with myself that when I'm at work I'm at work and when I'm at home I'm at home because when I was at work I was checking on them constantly all the time and doing all that versus now I just check on them on my lunch break and then like my nanny knows to call me if anything was wrong and she's sending me pictures throughout the day and whatnot but then when I'm traveling I'm always like checking up on them but I'm in work mode too so then I come home and I always schedule like a day or two when I'm done and I just spend like the whole day like quality time like off my phone you won't see me on social media like I'm with them like being present Mm -hmm. um I come from a business family and my mom was a single mom who my dad passed away when I was 10 so she had a we um, owned car dealerships and so she oh wow that's very time intensive oh so and I always saw the guilt that she had that she was not around like we had anything we ever needed which was such a blessing like um like materialistic wise and I'm so blessed for that but we just wanted time with her Mm -hmm. so I remember I said like when I had kids like I wanted to be very intentional at time because you never get that back and as any business person we know like money comes and goes but time is everything so I think really focusing directly on that yeah, I will. That's there's a ton of wisdom in that because my girls are much older than yours, as you know. <laughs> and I do look back at it and I think, did I balance it as well as I could have? I don't know. I think you always kind of have to just give yourself grace, grace. as you mentioned. I say that before. word a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I like. I think it's so hard because as moms, we're like building something for them and like to show them that we can still chase our dreams and I get fulfillment out of that. I was a stay at home mom for like a year and I just. I love my baby so much, but I missed working so much too. Mm -hmm. So just trying to find that balance. I've been through times where work is way more important and I have to check myself. And then when I'm focusing on my kids like too, too much, then I'm like, okay, I have to check myself to like kind of balance this. And the seasons too. Seasons, yeah. 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 And as you know, since you have a 14 year old, like there's definitely different requirements at different stages. So Mm -hmm. the one thing that I think is so powerful about women owning their own businesses is that you get to navigate through those seasons with your children because you really can control your schedule to a degree. It's right? such yeah. a blessing, that part of it. Like, if they're sick, I stay home, you know? Like, yeah. that is yeah. such a blessing that I have. I'm like, how do moms do this that work 8 to 5? Like, yeah. that they can't just, you know, like, just run home real quick or if something happens. So tell me, in, in a business acquisition, which okay. you did, anything that you would give as wisdom, like, oh, my gosh, I could have done this differently or it sounded like you had some really great guidance. She sounds like she's an amazing person. Oh, she's amazing. But was there anything that you're like, I just didn't know. And have now more looking cash flow. back, have, have more, more cash, cash flow. flow. Yeah. I put everything into it for my down payment and everything. Like I knew that it was meant to be. I put everything I had into it. And so then I didn't 
realize like cost effective wise, like I was going off her numbers and I knew that they were solid and like it was a solid company. However, she didn't have to make a huge payment for the company every month, you know? So it was just more like figuring out cash flow and inventory levels too. Mm -hmm. Um, As we're growing as well, it's been harder because the more people are buying, the more I have to reorder, the more that I have to have money up front. So it's just been this constant ongoing thing. Um, And it's a blessing that we're growing, right? Like it'd be worse if it was just dead and just sitting there. Mm -hmm. But I definitely say cash flow would have been a huge thing. Um, Something that she really did that if anybody is trying to like um, buy a business that I think was so beneficial is she had a board that like had, okay, so we buy this from this person. We order this. We ask for this. This is the last receipt in case they try to up your price. Like this is how much we pay per unit. Mm -hmm. This is how you order it. She had so many things like that. I mean, we have over 200 SKUs. So, so many things that you have to order correctly, like one little letter off, it's not the same thing. And so she had that really prepared for me. I also got her assistant in the deal as well. She was only, I I only had a keeper around for six months. I could not run this business without her. She is my saving grace. And so it's almost like having a piece of Hillary, like uh, like in my company institutional knowledge from all of that's incredible oh we tried this once and this didn't work so it's almost like Mm -hmm. i have an idea that hillary already had and she's like we tried this but if we tweaked it this way this would work and it's like oh or she has like all she she's very um organized very uh, methodical i'm Mm -hmm. not and so like i'll say an idea like for instance the other day i was like okay i really want to redo our branding on our um manual our training manual and she's like i was like yeah it just doesn't like fit like what Mm -hmm. my colors, my scheme, like my branding is. And she's like, yeah, we'll work on that. Well, then like two weeks ago, I went to do a training and I pulled up my manual and it was completely redone. It was completely all done. No, that's just a blessing. (gasps) So you just got super lucky. Such a blessing. Yes, Yes, but she (laughs) listens like, and she's very like, okay, this is like how we're going to like implement this. And then if she's wrong, she's like, okay, like let's just fix it. And it's just very, she's a safe place for me too. Like I don't have to be on like eggshells with her. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's a huge blessing. (laughs) Okay, so let's talk about money. So the one question that I always ask my guests, I know you know this, is when you hit six figures, Mm -hmm. what did that mean to you? How did that feel? Do you remember it? Yeah, okay, so I obviously listen to the podcast and I hear you say that, so I was like thinking on that. And honestly, I didn't get a hold of my numbers. I was not good at numbers until like three years ago. So when I first made my first six figures, I remember looking at it at the tax accountant and I was like, wait, there's no way I made that much. Are you sure? Like, I was very like, conf- like confused. Um, and then I think when I was more tracking the numbers and see it, um, I think it's like this exciting feeling, but then I also feel like it's like, okay, like what's the next step? Like, how do I hit that next goal? Mm-hmm. And so I think it's such a rewarding, but I don't feel like I stopped and smelled the roses as much as I should have in life. Do you feel yeah, like that ever? I know what you like mean. where it's just never good and en- not not good enough because like it's a blessing and I'm so thankful, but I'm very um, hard on myself. Yeah, I'm like okay, so like we have to hit two fifty this year. Then like there, if yeah. I can hit six figures this easy, like let's go. And then okay, now I have to hit half a million. Okay, how am I hitting the million next? Like it's like a game, and so I wish I would have stopped and like done the small wins. Like even when I bought the company, I'm like mm-hmm. oh, but now I have debt. Yeah. Like you know, and then now like I have three more payments until the company's paid off that I've paid off in two years. Years. That's, that's or two and a half years. So that's a blessing, right? Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, okay, but then this. Like, I need to like stop and be like, wow, you did that. Like, I'm yeah, proud like, of you. How, I would do that to you. Yeah, I do that exactly. to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's kind of my roundabout answer to that. You need to do something for yourself when you have the company paid off. Like, really stop and celebrate. You're going to go that. on a trip with me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bahamas really or something? Great one. <laughs> yep, let's go do something. <laughs> okay, so last question. Um, well, I have two more. This one is easy. Book or podcast, anything that you recommend, and it can be from your industry, but is there anything that you recommend to women on a regular basis? Podcast, I listen to Mel Robson. You do? Robson every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she really helps my mindset and to check me. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, reading-wise, I try to read a book a day. Or not a day. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I try to uh, read a book a month, and I just listen to um, it in the car normally. I don't yeah. listen to music and just listen to those. Um, is there one that sticks out? I'm thinking Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I know that that just, like, is kind of like a basic one. I, I listen to all over the place, whether it's self-help, business. I sometimes listen to, like, chick flick ones, like, just to get my brain kind of going. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a really good friend who me and him go off of each other quite a bit, and he gets my brain going. So, like, I normally call him, too, like, to do that. But podcast-wise, Mel Robson, she, she – she, Yeah, she's Gibson? great. Oh, she's, she's amazing. Great. Yeah, yeah, that really, really helps yeah. me. 
Yeah, she's got a lot of great wisdom. Mm -hmm. And her books are good. I have a hard time getting through them, though. Mm. I prefer, there are some people that I prefer on, on, podcast. on podcast or on Audible where you're just listening and to it. The only thing about Audible is if the reader has a dry voice, voice even if yeah, it's the you're... best content ever. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. No. Yeah. Okay, last question. Okay. What didn't I ask you that you would want to share? So our demographic is women that are aspiring to six figures or women that are like you and I where they're kind of our contemporaries. So anything that you think in your journey, I know you're big on inspiring. Anything in your journey that you think, oh, this would be good for someone to know. It's definitely the grace. Give yourself grace. Be your own best friend. We only really have ourselves at the end of the day. So what we're saying to ourselves should really be what we would be saying to like the most important person in our lives, our best friends, our moms. So really just give yourself grace and to stop and smell the roses like during it. I know I said that before, but really enjoy the small things because the big things will come with mm -hmm. the small things. And um, I just really, really, really suggest taking those small wins and celebrating them, but then working twice as hard. Thank you for spending the time with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah.